So, which one's the red? They're both black. Now, I did say that this holds up surprisingly well compared to an FX3 or even a C70, which we're actually shooting on right now. But how does it compare to a 12 year younger red camera like this Komodo X? So I just made a video about my cheap red camera. Since then, this idiot actually bought a Komodo X. So uh, what better thing to do than just scratch the video I had actually planned and um, compare these two. So let's start with the very basic stuff. The Komodo X, it doesn't even have any red logos on it. So, I mean, it's basically useless. You can't even flex on your friends or clients with it. Now, usability wise, these are actually surprisingly similar. I'm sure you get a few more ports on this that allow you more expandability, but then again, there's modules for this. So you can also slap anything you want on there. Sure, the built-in screen on the Komodo is kind of nice, but um, well, you're gonna want an external monitor anyway. There are certain other benefits like the built-in Wi-Fi, which allows you to control this with an app or even a monitor wirelessly. Technically that also exists for this, but you need a module that goes where your V-mount goes and I don't think the app even exists anymore. Other differences would be the lens mount. Now, while this went with Red's older modular system, which basically gives you PL, EF or F mount, the Komodo went with the RF mount and on the X, it's actually the locking mount again. So that's nice. Plus the RF mount comes with autofocus. Now it's a cine camera. So how much you're gonna wanna use that? It really depends on you. We both have cine lenses on here anyway. So there's that. Also, I can't really speak to how good it actually is. Now, does that mean you should just save 10 grand and go with the old one? No, obviously not. There's one big benefit we haven't talked about yet, and that's the new sensor. So this one shoots 6K instead of 5K now, which, okay, that might be irrelevant. So the big differences should really come in, in dynamic range and low light. This thing goes up to ISO 12,800, while this one only goes up to 3,200. And 16 and a half stops of dynamic range versus 13 and a half stops of dynamic range should make a pretty big difference. So let's test that. So these are obviously not great tests, but they get the point across. We expose both of these to just not clip the highlights. And um, yeah, as you can see, the Komodo X captures a lot more detail in the shadows. If we boost them, yeah, it just gets even more obvious. But yeah, yeah, no, there's just a lot more detail in the shadows. Oh, at first glance, they appear very similar in noise at ISO 3200. But um, what's interesting is that, yeah, actually the Komodo is like a full stop brighter. So if we match them, yeah, the Komodo wins. So is it actually worth 10 grand more than this camera? Well, if you're an idiot like me and you bought it to fuck around with, absolutely not. I mean, I could shoot these on a potato and no one would actually care. So no, but if you need this for work and you rely on it, then probably yes. If even just for the fact that you can actually get support from Red on it. 